Let's start at the beginning. I think the important thing to understand is that woke exploits people's positive sentiments that they want to see the end of racism and sexism. It builds on that, and, it, and it's an entirely laudable uh, social mood, but in, in the process, it uh, turns everything around and transforms everything. It introduces, as Sylvie has identified, a new language whereby to be anti-racist today means to celebrate racial difference uh, and, to, and leads to the demand in American university campuses for racially segregated dormitories, which to anyone of my age would be seen as a form of apartheid and is quite the opposite of the Martin, uh, you know, the Martin Luther King, I have a dream of you know, unifying people. So, so first of all, it turns that around. And, and then it just goes completely off the rails. I, I mean, obviously, there's that element where it denies its very existence, despite having introduced the term in a very explicit way, particularly uh, in the early years of this century. And then it politicizes every aspect mm. of life. Mm -hmm. There's nothing you can do or say that can't be deconstructed through the prism of woke. So to, to give you crazy examples, you're not allowed, for instance, in Canada, you, you, which I used to teach in, in British Columbia, and you're right to point out, you know, one of the wokest places on the planet. You're not allowed to call homeless people homeless people because the claim is that that defines them by their homelessness. And so you now have to say, people suffering from homelessness. And then, of course, if you were to go to a homeless person and say, does this new definition help alleviate your suffering? Of course not. <laughs> it does nothing. So it's this, uh, what's important to understand about woke also is that it's a performative gesture politics. Yeah, it, it, it focuses on the performance uh, and does little to address the, the underlying inequalities and challenges. And you can't get a better example than the one Sylvie gave about Claudine Gay uh, and the Harvard University saga. I mean, Claudine Gay went out of her way when she was Dean of Humanities at Harvard to hound out Roland Fryer. Yeah. Roland Fryer is a black academic who won a MacArthur Genius Award at the age of 30, which was unheard of. Um, but his research went against the dominant woke narrative uh, of black people suffering at the hands of the police in the United States of America. And he discovered, much to his own consternation, that actually if you're white, you're far, far more likely to be killed by the police in the United States than if you're black. And because of that, she made a point of trying to rescind his tenure, which had never been done within Harvard. Now, since she herself has lost her job as president of Harvard, she has played the woke identity card by saying, well, it's because I'm, black, I'm the first black woman uh, to be the president of Harvard. And it's, it just shows you that ordinary people can't accept that someone like myself from a Haitian immigrant background can reach the pinnacles uh, of American academia. Now, we all know that Haiti is one of the poorest uh, Caribbean islands, one of the poorest places on the planet. But Claudine Gay comes from one of the wealthiest families in Haiti. You know, her uh, ancestors run the concrete industry the father, in Haiti. Father. Yeah, so, uh, and she went to a $50,000 a year private school before then going on to Princeton and Stanford. In other words, she plays on her color <laughs> in order to avoid discussion about her class privilege. And so you get this constant competition and, and the, the politicization of, like I said, everything is ludicrous. Um, yeah, sorry. 